reveal a card for Omnath. Uh, boom, Cruel Ultimatum you. Discard three, sack a creature, lose five life. I get creature back, gain five, draw three cards. Hi, it's Vex, and today we finally complete the cycle. That's right, from Omnath the first all the way to Omnath the fifth. Omnath, locus of all. Let us actually read this brand new Omnath that we've gotten. Omnath, locus of all. So it's got all the little colored manas everywhere. White, blue, Frexian, black. Interesting. Red, green. So it's all five colors, one of each. You could pay four mana and two life. Um, with the uh, Frexian being two life. Or you can pay all five mana if you like. I recommend paying the two life because it's very good like that. Legendary creature, Frexian Elemental. Wow. It's been Frexianized, this Omnath. It actually makes me really sad because I really wanted this Omnath to, to be a Zendikarian Omnath versus a Frexian Omnath. But it is what it is. So, if you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. That could see text from the first Omnath with the green mana. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card if it has three or more colored mana symbols in its mana costs. So mana symbols, like these are mana symbols. You have all one color, all different colors, or two, two then one. If you do, add three mana in any combination of its colors and put it into your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it into your hand and it's a 4-4. Four, four. So let's take a moment, digest uh, what this means. We'll use the Omnath the third, Omnath, Lo Omnath Locus of the Royal as an example. You, what you do is you look at this card, you're like, oh, okay, and reveal it. Then you can add green, blue, red, and any of those combinations to your mana pool. Then you just put it in your hand to cast it. Just really cool. Um, this is at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, so it has to survive one whole round for it to, to happen. So you get three mana, so it like, does a little ramp, does what the Omnath does, lets you keep your mana in the mana pool. So what we would do is, usually what I do is take a dice and just say three mana. If you don't use your three mana that you get from Omnath and Omnath's trigger, you just keep it and it becomes black mana. So you have to, you know, remember where all your different color mana are. Now, if you don't use this, your three mana you get from Omnath or anything, uh, you could just tap it, it becomes black and stays in your pool forever. So you can either put a dice on Omnath like that, where you don't have a little black mana symbol like I have right here, and just keep it there and stays there until Omnath dies or you use it. With that being said, the theme of the deck, finally, after saying all of that and how it works, the theme of the deck is Omnaths. We're going to play all five Omnaths. They are all, each, elementals. Right there, so it's an elemental theme. Then we're going to go into Omnath's second ability. We're going to do color pips right here. Oops. Color pips right here, which means each colored mana symbol. So if you, this has four different color pips, or, you know, four different pips of color. Red, that's what their nickname, I don't know why I call it pips, but it is what it is. Red, red, green, green, so that's four different pips. That would satisfy this Omnath's uh, second ability. If you reveal it, then you can add red, red, green, red, 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 green, 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 red, red, green, green, red, whatever. So you can do that. So this is a triple theme, and I will admit the mana is bad in this deck. First of all, your Omnath mana does not become rainbow mana, it becomes black. But once you play like three different pips, meaning usually gold cards, like having black, 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 you know, it's kind of restrictive. Like, neck I guess you can play Necropotence. That would work off of Omnath. But for the most part, we are playing usually three color cards because it makes this more, Omnath more interesting. Uh, we are doing some X spells because Omnath gets you, lets you save your mana. We're playing bigger spells. The mana is bad. And you know what? I think mana nowadays in Magic has become too good. So I don't mind the mana being too bad. It makes you work for it. It makes you work harder for it. And when you get Omnath out, you know, you might... Get a little mana relief because I'm not generates mana that you can use right away. We are only searching for this card, the World Tree, which fixes all our lands and makes them color rainbow, rainbow mana right there, which is amazing. The World Tree doesn't take this black mana, change it to anything else, but that's uh, for a little later in the deck tech. Anyways, before we go and read each of these Omnaths for you know what Omnath does, don't forget to have your tokens. Not a lot of tokens actually. This token belongs to that Omnath, but not a lot of tokens in this deck. I have deck list in the description below. Help ch check that out. Moving right along to the deck deck, it looks like I've done nothing because this is the first section. All the other Omnaths 
Um, I am kind of sad they're not exactly compatible with each other. It's kind of interesting. I thought Omnath would play off each other, but not not really. This Omnath, Omnath Locus of Mana, green mana doesn't empty from your mana pool of steps and phases end. Omnath of man, Omnath Locus of Mana. I can't just say Omnath because there's five of them in here. Gets plus one plus one for each green mana in your mana pool. So, yes, you would wonder how they worked. Uh, essentially, if you tap green mana, you would keep the Omnath mana. And anything non-green would turn black with this Omnath. So yes, you do get to keep your green mana over time. This is a little bit of the Elementals theme here. Let me get my Elemental sticker back there. Boom. Omnath Locus of Rage. Three red, red, green, green. Seven total mana. I think the most um, uh, highest mana value Omnath. This is Landfall. So Landfall, whenever land ETBs, make a 5-5 five, five red, green Elemental creature token. Then when this dies, or another Elemental, the Elemental theme right there, uh, you control dies. It deals three damage to any target yes i think it's been revived to any target even battles now omnath locus of the royal one green blue red does satisfy this omnath's uh ability this one does not unfortunately uh, but when etbs it, uh, deals damage to any target equal to a number of elementals you control so more elemental theme then when a land etbs under your control landfall Put a plus one plus one counter on target element, elemental you control, including itself. If you control eight or more lands, draw a card. So landfall, draw a card, pretty sweet. Um, since our mana is bad, uh, a little spoiler here, we are playing a lot of fetch lands and triomes. So this these omnaths get triggered a lot. And this one too. I guess what brings them all together is mana and um, landfall. But I wish they all had elemental theme or something. This one... Costs four different pips, which satisfy that that Omnath. ETB draw card. Landfall. First time, gain four life. Second time, add the four mana. Third time, deal four damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you don't control. So that is beautiful there, our four elementals. I just want to take a quick second to stare at them. I wonder if what they're going to do is Omnath slowly loses its colors and becomes colorless over time. That would be interesting to, to reverse age Omnath. We'll see. The first set of elementals, we do have a couple more. Couldn't fit them on screen, there's too many elementals. But we do have the three Cavaliers. Um, I think the three better ones. There, You could play all five if you really want to. But three of them. Uh, let's see, which cards do not satisfy Omnath's second ability? is Risen Reef, Gigantha, and Bane of Progress. But this card is so powerful, I have to include it. Uh, this card is really powerful in an elementals themed deck. One blue, one green blue. Wherever they, it or another elemental ETB is under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it into the battlefield tap. If you don't, put it into your hand so you look at it. You don't have to um, reveal it. Animar, pro white, pro black. And then when you cast a creature spell, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter, and then discounts things based on the number of counters it has. These Cavaliers all have a keyword. They all have an ETB trigger. This one makes a 3-3 three, three dude, or destroy something, makes a 3-3 three, three dude. This one destroys a creature, and this one gets you something from your library. I know text nowadays, magic has now, magic cards have so much text. Um, if you want to read what they do, you can check out the deck list in the description. Uh, because I spent so much time talking about Omnath, then I don't want to spend too much time talking about what they do. But essentially, what they do is they have three of the same mana color pips, which would trigger Omnath. Cavalier Knight's the best one because you can use the black mana from Omnath. But that is there. They also do something when they die. There. We have Horde of Notions. This is a full, full Wooberg. So you can reveal and add three of the mana colors that you don't have. Vigilance Trample Haste, so it's pretty neat. And then you play the Wooberg. You may play target elemental card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. That's pretty cool. So you may cast it, I guess, with the new Oracle text. This Omnath, let's say you reveal an Animar. You don't have to use the Animar mana, the blue, red, green. You can use it on Horde of Notions, so that's pretty neat. Reason We have Gigantha from the new March of Machines Multiversal Legends is because it has this text, add Wooberg. This mana can't be spent to pay generic mana cost. So you add Wooberg and just cast your hard casting um, things. And it's very easy to cast because it requires four green and black, or green and red hybrid, so it's neat. Bane of Progress, the reason I like it and the reason it's in the deck is because when ETBs destroys all artifacts and enchantments, we are playing more towards creatures and spells that have three different pips on them. So this is really good. We're not playing a lot of artifacts or enchantments, so it just wipes everything out. Majolfa, 
We are not a Majoltha deck, I will admit. I just like Majoltha because it has three different pips in it, again. Uh, but during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. Not a Majoltha deck, but it's cool. As long as you get you one or two cards a turn, that's pretty neat. Or just one card a turn. You don't need too much. Royal Elemental. So if you didn't like our triple uh, white, triple black, triple green, here is triple blue. Flying Landfall. Um, when you do a landfall, you can control a target creature for as long as you control Royal Elemental. It's a very expensive 6 mana 3-2, but with Omnath, you can add the triple blue. So the idea is when Omnath hits the board, you put your opponents on notice because you, you, you look at the card and you're like, huh, is, 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 am I going to get 3 free mana? It's insane ramp because you can put Omnath on the board and just tap your mana, save it. And may pay, play some of these on the fair later turns. With our bad mana situation, let's just... Uh, Let's make things more fun. We have Maelstrom Wonder. This is a teamer one, five teamer. Creatures you control of haste, Cascade, Cascade. So you can get more good value there. Nyx Bloom Ancient does have triple green as casting cost. Uh, triples your mana. Triple green, triple mana, why not? Titan of Industry, I just love this. This is an elemental as well. I've got these who are, these are the rest of the elementals. I forgot to mention that. Four triple green, Reach Trample. Uh, when ETBs choose to destroy our target artifact or enchantment, target player gains five life. Make a Rhino Warrior creature, which I don't have the token. Oh my God, I gotta get that token. Put a shield counter on a creature you control. There's our Rhino token. The funny part is I double check and then triple check to make sure I have all the tokens. I know if you use Moxfield, I use uh, MTG Goldfish to make my deck. Um, double check and triple check I, my tokens, and I always miss one. Anyways, now we have four different tokens. There we go. Put this Omnath token on top, of course, most important one. And speaking about bad mana, we have our ultimatums, which is like the worst mana situation, you know. We want a challenge. This deck, we want a real challenge. So I put four ultimatums, four of the ten ultimatums. We have Runa's ultimatum. Of course, we're going to play that because it's insane. Destroy all non-land permits your opponents control. We have Inspired Ultimatum. This is a pet card of mine. You don't have to include it. Probably you shouldn't include it, but it's the uh, Jeskai one. Target player gains five life, which is us. Deals five damage to any target, then you draw five cards. That's pretty neat. It doesn't use any of the mana, the black mana from Omnath. These three do use black mana, which helps a lot from the Omnath because you can generate here red, red, uh, white, or triple white if you need that from Omnath's ability. Uh, we have Eerie Ultimatum, get all things back from our graveyard. This is the triple black uh, middle one. Then we have Cruel Ultimatum, which is also triple black middle. When I say triple black middle, it's triple black in the middle right there. So this one really is easier to cast with Omnath's ability. I love this one. Target opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, then loses five life. You turn a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, draw three cards, then you gain five life. Too bad it doesn't say each opponent. That'd be broken. I, I guess it'd be a insane commander staple. Then on top of that, we have our honorary ultimatum here. Unite the Coalition from Dominaria United Commander. Two Wooburg, seven man total. Choose five. You may choose the same mode more than once. Target permanent, permanent phases out. Target player draws a card. So you can draw five cards like this here. Exile target player's graveyard. Graveyard hate, I love it. Two damage to any target. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. So you can destroy five things. Gain, uh, deal a lot of damage. Phase things out. Draw a bunch of cards. Exile's graveyard. So it's like an ultimate. Build your own ultimatum. I forgot to put the color pips thing for the other one, but that's what I meant. Then we have the other color pips card here. We have some big fatties, some smaller uh, fatties. I guess they're not fatties, they're just smaller. That's not how it works. But we do have an X spell right here, which I talked about earlier. Rocco Cabaretti Caterer, X, red, green, white. So you pay six mana, get that Bane of Progress. When you eat ETBs, if you cast it, you may search your library for a creature with mana value X or less, put in the battlefield, and then shuffle. So this is great to re reveal off Omnath. You get your three mana to cast it right there. And then you give me, let's say you have five. You could just sink five minutes to it, get maybe a Thalia, a Risen Reef, another Omnath, etc. Then we have, these cards are just cool cards I just want to include. Um, again, it's a very customizable deck. Three mana symbols is what you really want. Unless it's a very important creature to you. To you and you might not trigger Omnath, then that's fine too. You have Thalia and the Gitrog monster. We saw deck tech with that. That's a little hate piece there. Actually, let's actually read this. This is a brand new card. First Strike, Death Touch. 
play additional land each turn. Creatures and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. When this attacks, sacrifice a creature or land and draw a card. We have Soul of Grin Wind Grace, one Jund. When it ETBs or attacks, put a land card from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control. We are playing fetch lands, so Thalia's help helps us get our extra more, more land drops. Even if you draw lands with Omnath and get more land drops with Thalia and the Gitraw. They get discard land, gain three life, discard a land, draw a card. Uh, discard land, Soul Wind's Grace, gains indestructible to end a turn, tap it, like a pseudo regenerate. And then, yes, you gotta pay mana there. I just didn't read it. Then we have the big boys or girls, big everythings. Three green, white, blue, black, attracts a mana. Seven mana, flying vigilance, death touch, lifelink. When ETBs reveal top 10 cards of your library, for each card type, choose those and put them into your hand. Then we have Zakama Primal Calamity, right there. Nine mana value total, but easily achievable with Omnath, of course. Vigilance Reach Trample. When it ETBs, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. So you can just power up Omnath here, and then cast this, untap it, and then power off Omnath. Again, which is really cool. Then you can use your extra mana to do you know, three damage to target creature. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, gain three life. These are the X spells. Uh, three of them have multiple pips. We do have a finisher and Torment of Hailfire. This is one of our great finishers. I know it doesn't have three pips, but uh, if you're charging up black mana, this is a really good finisher with that X spell there. We have a new one, or not new, an old one that I guess I haven't played very often. X, white, white, black, black. So it has the three pip, actually four pip require, four pips, but satisfies the three pips. Each part loses two times X life. You gain life equal to a life loss this way. So it is a drain spell with a lot of pips. I love this card. I just love, love, love this card. Villainous Wealth. Every time I play it, I get a chance to play it. I want to play it because I, I love stealing my opponent's stuff. Sultai. X is Sultai. Target opponent exiles top X cards of the library. You can cast any number of non-land cards with mana value X or less among them without paying their mana cost. So you just you know, pay 10 and play everything they have, which is amazing. Agadim's Awakening, mostly for the Mold Double Face card. Deal mostly because it's black. Um, I you could play all the different mold double face cards, but I make a single mana again. This deck has really bad mana, so we're playing. You'll see in the mana section playing triomes, fetch lands, shock lands, everything just make our mana work. Return from your graveyard to the battlefield. Any number of target creature cards that each have different mana values, X or less. So it's really good in the late game. It's really good to play as a land if you need it. We do have some charms and stuff that are exactly three colors three pips no extra colors mana so we can just get off omnath and just slam it on the board if we can we have four charms to do various things again deck list in the description below if you want to look it up but essentially the basic premise is i, I took all the charms i say draw two cards we do want to cycle through our deck uh get to the good stuff and these are easy to cast off omnath you can save your mana for other things team or sanity tribute to the world tree I love Timor Sensei. We actually have a bunch of Timor cards in here, if you didn't notice. But whenever a creature power four or greater ETBs under your control, you may draw a card. Then all your creatures gain haste. So card draw there. Tribute to the War Tree, World Tree, I should say. Green, green, green. Then when a creature ETBs under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two plus one plus one counters on it. Brand new card. Maybe they designed this card just for Omnath. Who knows? But very good in the Omnath situation. Our deck is sim a little bit base green because Omnath starts off as green. Every Omnath has green in it. So this is a decent fit in the deck. We have color pip removal. These are removals that satisfy the color pips. Void Ren, Crackling Doom, Supreme Verdict. Right there. Destroy any uh, non-land permanent. This one is not very used very often, but I do like this. I have this in the Mar Marchesa deck. Deals two damage to each opponent, so that's good. And each opponent sacrifices... A, a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. Then you have an uncountable wrath. I'm not a total monster. I don't. I'm not gonna make our our good removal spells bad. These are one of their ultra staples I have. And you know what? I can stay with my deck building philosophy. Five color deck. They get all these cool ultra staples. Very very efficient removal. Vanda blast. Source plasters. Assassin's trophy. Anguish I'm making. I know it's only two colors, but it's just very efficient. Uh, Easier, easier to cast in the deck if you have the mana to cast. Remember, mana is bad. Cyclonic Rift, Toxic Deluge, Blasphemous Act. These are 
sweepers that you can cast on the cheap and easy to cast as well. More ultra stables I have, Soul Guide Lantern, Battle Gate Recovery. Remove opponent's graveyard, get things back from your graveyard. Pretty good. The ramp cards, these ramp in interesting different ways. We have Bloom Tender, Fae Elder, gets you a mana of all the different colors of permanents. So if you have Omnath on Battlefield, these two tap for five, which is pretty insane. Dry the Elysian Grove, that's you play an extra land drop, but turns your lands into rainbow lands. Thank God, helping with the mana, of course. Seaborn Muse, you get to untap when everybody untaps and save your black mana for your big turns. Wargate, another X spell right here. So Wargate, Sovereign Scrying, Expedition Map. These two get your World Tree or any land that you need desperately. This X in advance, search your library for a permanent card with mana value X or less, put into the battlefield, then shuffle. Um, what you do is you just pay the Bant, X is zero, get your amazing World Tree, fix your mana. Again, I, I keep joking about it or talking about the mana is bad, like it is vital that you need to, you should, you're able to cast all your cards because of the theme that Omnath brings to the table. So having this card or this card or these cards uh, are very helpful. Expedition map, if you have this on the battlefield, then you can find one of your, your other utility lands-ish, like Thespian Stage or Vesuva to copy things. This is not legendary, by the way, so you can have multiple of these if anybody wants to strip mine you. Soul Ring, because it's great. We aren't playing that many artifacts. As you see, we, this is enchantment. Uh, Band of Progress blows it up, it blows it up. These, this sacrifices itself. We are playing Soul Ring and Smothering Tide as no, more artifact enchantments for Band of Progress, but we might not draw, draw Band of Progress, just, but we're ready for it. Smother your tithe makes treasures of rainbow, the tap sack for rainbow colors. Again, super helpful for our deck. The lands, the best land in all of magic, command tower, of course. Uh, World Tree, Exotic Orchard, Man Confluence, Path of Ancestry. These are all rainbow lands. We are playing Elementals theme, so this helps a little scry action, uh, which is really good for Omnath. You could scry and try to set Omnath up. I say that knowing you'll draw the card that you scry for your draw turn and then flip another card, so. If you play things at instant speed, then you can set it up. We are playing the 10 fetches, the 10 shocks, the 10 triumphs. Again, to get to fix our mana as best as we can. Yes, I know, and Dalta Triumph is not a um, full art. You want to know why? Because it's in my Thalia and the Gitrog monster deck, and this is what I have. If you want to complain about it, leave your answers or complaints in the comments below how that bothers you to death. I have nine full art triumphs and one crappy one. This is where we are with our basics. One lonely forest. We have Yavamaya to make some green because green is our base color. Baseju to play as land. But, you know, just in case, we are do we are playing a bunch of legendary Omnaths and etc. So Baseju's there. We have Bajuka Bog with Graveyard Hate. Vesuvia that's being staged so we can copy our Trium or the, the thing that produces the best point mana that we have. And again, we do have some spare mana sometimes with Omnaths, so that's being staged is really good. Vesuva. Helps you cast those ultimates by copying things, ATB tap, and copying some of those triomes. So you have a virtual 11, 12 triomes. That's it for the deck tech so far. Right now, we're going to shuffle up our deck. Don't be afraid to mulligan. If your man situation is bad, take that mulligan. Um, some players let you mulligan until you have a playable hand. Uh, here, I'm not sure what a, what you would say a reasonable playable hand is. You know, you can't keep mulligan until you get soul ring or... Or, you know, like five fetches to get all your five triomes. That's kind of unreasonable. But, you know, when you get a playable hand, keep it. You know, you, again, when you're doing this, you accept your man is bad. But it's fun. It's fun to play suboptimally because sometimes when people play, they always have perfect mana. And I think monocolor decks should enjoy the perfect mana scenario. But multicolor decks like Omnath, five color decks should be penalized. You know, to make it fair, because they, they could literally play any card that's legal in Commander versus a mono green deck and only play a fifth of the legal cards in Commander. Maybe more than a fifth because you have artifacts and such, but, you know, they can even access gold cards and everything. So anyways, we're going to shuffle this deck up. Before we go, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alert for new videos in the future. And we will be right back. All right, we are back. Omnaths with some elementals and color pies. Turn one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's see what we get. Hmm, four lands. Look at that, perfectly aligned. Two fetches, a triome, man confluence, black cards, a bunch of mana pips. Doesn't help within our hand, helps in the deck. But you know, it is what it is. All right, our mana is not that bad because we got the good side of our mana base right here. These could be two more triomes. That should set us up. We do need triple black for this one. 
Perfect hand. All right, let's go. Turn one. Other Omnath. OG Omnath. Green. So this looks like green, black, white, Abzan colors. Sweet. We'll play our ETB tapped Triome, of course. And what we could do is do a turn four Omnath. That's probably something that we can do. Maybe play turn three this Omnath, but not doesn't really help. So turn three Abzan Charm or just play some tap lands. So we have a lot of options there. Draw a card. Oh, another land. Well, now another one. We had four lands plus one more. I forgot we drew, drew Omnath. I thought we drew Drew's land last turn. I'm losing my mind, right? Anyways, okay. So what we do is we just uh, play our fetch land here. And remember, you got to fetch the right colors. So what we're going to do is fetch right away and get a Triome. Uh, and then we don't have green, right? We don't have green or blue. So we want the green, blue, Triome, and then black. So I believe that is um, Zagatha Triome. Let's see here. Let's find that Triome. Zagoth Triome is right there. So close. Zagoth Triome. We got, now we have two black pips here. Omnath does have the black Frexion, but we do have our triple black um, right there. Cavalier of Night. So we want to set ourselves up for success here. All right. Let's shuffle our deck up a little bit. There we go. Kaboom. This deck is a little slower. Um, hopefully, sometimes you can get our Bloom Tender or whatever. Start the party early, which would be insane. Play Bloom Tender, turn two or three, then play Omnath, tap Bloom Tender for five. We didn't get Bloom Tender or the other one. All right, turn three. So we get Void Ren, more three mana spells. All right. Well, let us affect the board. Let's just play a Forest, get down our OG Omnath, just, just to have something on the board blocker or whatever. I know it's a 1-1. One, one. It's kind of 1-1 one, one for 3. kind of sucks. We could draw in more cards to remove somebody's commander or more removal. But next turn we plan to play Omnath. So turn 4 here. Let's see here. Draw our card. Zakama. Wow. We could get to Zakama easier with Omnath, man. So don't uh, be scared of the nine mana thing. What we'll do is we'll play our mana confluence here. I think we have green, blue, white, red. There we go. Now we'll play the, the Frexian penalty for this. Kaboom, Omnath, Locus of All. Next to Omnath, Locus of Mana. Omnath 1, Omnath 5. All right, that's cool. Turn 5, so this is where the fun begins, right? We don't have any extra mana laying around. We'll trigger Omnath. Being we draw a card first, sorry. Boom, Cavalier Thorns. Oh, that'd been a great card to get hit with Omnath. All right, now let's read this one more time because I like to read cards for over and over again. Look at the top card of your library. All right, my post combat man piece. Ooh, cruel ultimatum. That's even better than Cavalier Thorns. You may reveal that card if it has three or more colored mana symbols. Definitely because it has seven colored mana symbols. If you do add three mana of any combination of its colors, put it onto your hand and and if you don't, put it in your hand anyways. Okay, so we're going to reveal this. So this is tricky because we have to figure out the colors that we do have and get the colors we don't have from Cruel Ultimatum. Yes, this force does not cast Cruel Ultimatum. We totally understand that. But we do have a land called Misty Rainforest that can get a shock land that can cast Cruel Ultimatum. Okay, so we have black, black, black. Here we can do... Let's see here. Let's just do add a black mana, a red mana, black, black, red, red, and then blue mana. Let's add one of each right there. So we have one of each mana there. What we'll do is we'll crack our Misty Rainforest here and we'll get, let's just tap this black, black, red, and let's get a blue, green. Let's get a, uh, let's make black, black, blue, sorry. So now we have three black, uh, two blue, and one red. And then we'll get a red green or red something land. Uh, or red blue or red green land. So let's get Stomach Grounds. Sure, we'll do that. We have base green. We have Cavalier of Thorns coming in. So we need our triple green here. We have triple black here. Perfect. Okay. We'll get a red green land here. 
this is sweet. This does take a little time to make, because this is one of the uh, ultimates with seven different mana costs, so you have to make sure you have the mana to cast it. We keep this green untapped for Omnath, of course. Uh, then we tap this. Then we have our two red there. We have our Cruel Ultimatum. So let's read this again. Target opponent sacks a creature. Let's pick the opponent with their commander, of course. Discards three cards. Ouch. Loses five life. Return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. We have nothing, which is okay. Um, draw three cards and gain five life. So all the pain we've been doing for fetching, mana confluencing, paying for Omnath, Phyrexian, mana cost comes back to us. And then we'll draw three cards. Titan of Industry, Rafine's Tower, and Supreme Verdict. So that is pretty sweet. We have tons of cards now, actually. Um, so we did the Coral Ultimatum. Now we can just discard some things that we don't want. Let's say we do have Mass Removal. Keep that land. We'll keep that. Uh, Cavalier of Thorns is super good. Ramps you. Keep that. Keep that. We'll just get rid of our Redundant Removal. Maybe Anguish Unmaking. And discarding Absent Charm. We don't really need to draw more cards since we have seven cards in our hand. This man is used for a cruel man, which is sweet. All right, turn five was sweet. We just knocked somebody, hopefully knocked them out of the game, but you know, sometimes that's what we do. All right, I think if we play Zakama next turn, if we get the mana from Omnath, of course. Um, at the end of turn, what we're gonna do is add this, float this with this Omnath here. Get the green mana flowing. Untap. Turn six. All right, we'll draw our card. Agadim's Awakening. Gosh, we'll see if we get our... I know it's got three pits, but it's not the Omnath. Trigger Omnath. Breeding Pool. Sometimes you, you get a land. If that was in reverse order, it'd be much better. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six with our land drop. Seven. So what can we do with seven mana? We can play a Titan of Industry. I think that's worth it. Right? Yeah. Let's do that. Shock this in. Use this Omnath mana. Pay our seven mana. Titan of Industry. We want ETBs. You know, destroy our artifact or enchantment. Gain five life. We don't need that. We just got five life from Cruel Tomatum. Make a four four. Put a shield counter on a creature you control. So, we will make that fork four. That's sweet. And then we'll put a shield on our Omnath. We'll use this this as a spike feeder shield on map. So now we're, we're hooked up. Next turn, turn seven. So that's sweet. I love playing Cruel Ultimatum early here. Let's see, we got still have tons of cards. Again, this deck uh, cards Omnaf to function. Draw a card, ETB land, okay. Then we'll do our reveal. Oh, Omnaf the second. Then we'll add uh, green or red into the pool. Let's see here, we just like our green. We just add all three green. We're greedy. Play Cavalier of Thorns or something. Let's see what else we could play. Oh, we got Zakama too. Sweet. Okay, let's do that. All three green. That's, uh, that's, that's um, nine man total. So we'll play Zakama right there. Use our three. Zakama, I mean, Zakama. Zakama, Primal Calamity. We'll untap our land, actually. We take these back seeds real quick. We'll uh, play our Rafine's Tower. Uh, we'll play our Path of Ancestry. Then we'll untap that one with Zakama coming into play. So then we have a fresh seven mana, which is super sweet. All right. Now we have a full grip still, which is great. We have a fresh seven mana. We can play this Omnath and do Landfall. Uh, or play the Cavalier, you know. Uh, we got lots of options, which is cool. We'll just play Omnath the second. Tap our mana. We do have all the colors here. Omnath the second, or we'd use this as zap artifacts or enchantments. Just pretty cool. Funny parts we still have mostly a huge grip here. We'll, we'll take one more turn. This deck is slow. We'll admit that. But now you have big nine nine there. It's not haste. Okay. We haven't got any new fetch lands for this Omnath. Draw a card here. Reveal a card for Omnath. A land, of course, the wrong order, always the wrong order, right? Except for the last time. So sometimes you do get lands, it does happen. Um, if you have you need a Supreme Verdict or anything, you can attack your big boy here, big boy here. This has a shield counter here. You can save up your mana. But God, we have so many things to do. It's so great. Love it. We uh, 
can do, you know, landfall here, boom. Make a dude here. We have eight mana. We could drain them a little bit. Play Cavalier of Night. Cavalier of Thorns. Let's just ramp some more. Play Cavalier of Thorns. Um, right here. We could save Void Rend. Uh, remember to save your Void Rend mana. I think this is the Void Rend mana right here. Cavalier of Thorns. This is an elemental for Path of Ancestry. We'll scry first. Eerie Ultimatum. Nah. Well, we're going to lose it anyways. So we want to get our lands. And then we'll do the um, top five cards. These are our five cards. Get our land. Our only land, actually. Put these at the... Uh, oh, the rest in your graveyard, actually. The Eerie Ultimatum would have worked out really well. We could Void Rend something. That's pretty neat. So the deck is slow. The mana is atrocious. But... And, and you have to really pay attention to what you're tapping here. We did get lucky. We got two rainbow lands. It's pretty nice. We did get a forest, which is unfortunate because we want rainbow. Uh, the sucky part, we never got to use the, um, well, I guess not really a sucky because you're just using all your mana constantly. And I still have a whole grip. This is like a little Frexian Arena that makes mana, which is pretty sweet. We got big cards here like Zakama, Zakama, Big Omnath, Little Omnath, Cavalier of Thorns. We got cool elementals, dinosaurs going on. So overall, this deck is good. gets off running pretty quick once you get the Omnath mana. It's not guaranteed because, you know, you could just draw land. Lands are just not guaranteed. Uh, we always draw things in the wrong order. I, I think it was 50-50 uh, that time. We drew two things in the right order and two things in the wrong order, so that could happen. So sometimes plan on, you know, if you get a land, it happens. If you want to have more more stability, you get you place a sense of these Divine Top or cards like Brainstorm and such or Scroll Rack to stack the top of your deck. But... I'd rather be, rather make it be random because I love just like flip and be like, is this gonna work? Is this gonna work? And if it doesn't, it's cool. If it does, it's really, really cool. Anyways, that is the end of our deck deck. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos in the future. I have deck lists in the description below, along with all my cool affiliate links, TCG Player, eBay, etc. Help support the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.